Hello. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the Law of One Spiritual Advice Podcast. My name is L, and I am back to share with you my reflections and perceptions on some Law of One material. And I'm going to be reading a little bit of, of the material, and then I will just share with you my opinions on it. So, normally I will read something from the Law of One, the raw material, but LL Research uh, channels other sorts of material, this entity called Quo, and Quo is um, an, an aspect of raw as well, and it's complicated. I don't really care to explain it right now. Uh, but basically, this is going to be Quo material. So Quo is, is a little bit more human speak, if you will. It's a little easier to understand. It will probably be like speaking to a friend instead of speaking to some random alien force out there, right? Okay, here we go. So today's topics are going to be sort of centered around being vulnerable or vulnerability, and specifically vulnerability in opening the heart and attempting to serve, and also how this apply or how this is related to rejection. And um, I suppose we'll probably delve into the rhymes of being authentic and authenticity. So. First, let's read the quote from Quo. I believe I've heard Jim and Carla uh, refer to it as Kuo. I, I don't know. My brain, whenever I read it, I read Quo. So you choose what you will. But this is from March 26, 2016. And the quote begins. It seems then that the opening of the heart is a great act of folly. And indeed, my friends, we would suggest to you that it can be precisely this, that when you do open the heart, you do find yourself vulnerable. When you do open the heart, you do put yourself in a position where another may act in such a way as to cause you pain. And when you do open the heart and get catalyst that is of a particularly strong nature, you can find yourself in a position of recoiling back upon yourself, which makes any future opportunity to open the heart all that much more difficult to avail yourself of. So, the opening of the heart may well be seen to have may well be seen to have a kind of wisdom of its own built in its own process built into its nature and slightly different part of the transcript uh, they say we cannot tell you my friends that you will be safe in every effort you make to engage with those around you from a standpoint of love we cannot say that your offering of love will be accepted and well received we cannot say that you will emerge from every interaction you enter with the intention of love in a manner which celebrates the love that has been there offered, for you may find that your love is rejected. You may find that those that you have sought to love will not give you love in return. And then in a different part of the transcript, one is like the springtime flower opening on the first days of bright sunshine and warmth, but doing so in a manner which is tentative which tests the air to see whether there is, after all, a hint of frost, a hint of danger lurking. But the flower must open to fulfill its destiny, and it must do so without full realization of what the day will bring, and when it finally comes to see that its glory will lie in being fully opened, even if this glory subjects it to the possibility of damage, then it realizes that destiny which is uniquely its own. End of transcript, end of quote. So that's from March 26, 2016. Um, yeah, so, you know, there we go. There's, I like the flower thing, which we can go into, which is obviously they're trying to say, like, hey, you open your heart. You know, opening your heart is sort of like a flower. And as you open it, you will just, you know, it has the possibility of getting frostbit or damaged. But eventually, you know, you open it and you open it no matter what. And, and you sort of have faith that the sun will shine. Right, so um, let's go into topic-specific things, such as being vulnerable when attempting to serve. That is sort of the number one thing on my mind, and it actually is very close to my heart, because um, I seem to have dealt with this quite a lot in my sort of path of awakening, if you will, in that, you know, the more that you put yourself out there and attempt to serve, the more that you are going to be rejected or the more that your service is not going to be taken maybe as you hoped it to be or the more that um, you know maybe somebody doesn't even want your service at all or they maybe you've done the opposite right you've, you've tried to serve and you've actually seemed to have created 
the opposite of service. So there's all those possibilities, um, which, you know, it's the more you think about them, the more you're sort of trying to intellectualize it and make all this sense about it and what can I do to avoid this in the future and, and that's all good and well you need to use your intellect as you should um, but you're still gonna need to just put yourself out there right and that putting yourself out there is going to take a bit of faith and a bit of effort from yourself um, and a bit of like vulnerability you're gonna have to put yourself in a position that's gonna be most likely quite uncomfortable because as you attempt to offer your service and it is, you know, strongly rejected by somebody, you're human, and it's really hard not to take that personally. Um, you know, my last podcast that I recorded was about freely giving and freely receiving, and, you know, a lot of this is very related to that, in that what you're attempting to do is to freely give of your being. But how, how do you freely give when you don't even completely know yourself, right? Like, these concepts make sense as I say them out loud, and, and you may agree with them f fully, but there's still parts of yourself that are sort of ego-driven and selfish, if you will, and you may do something for the sake of getting something in return. And, you know, I don't know, at first that, that is okay, right? You sort of have to take a few steps upon the path, but as I've gone and I, I've, I've realized the, the nature of service, it's that, you know, I need to, to go out and try my best to freely give um, of myself, regardless of circumstances, regardless of the possibility of rejection, regardless of the possibility that my service may be taken even in the opposite manner of the way I intended. It may, it may actually like hurt somebody, right? It's not my intention ever, but who knows? The, these things are possible. So um, with that, right, you probably would, you know, as you make these seeming mistakes, you're, you're going to be growing and, and learning from them. And then in the, the point is, is to sort of forgive yourself for past errors and to not make this decision to just never serve again you know it's better to make the decision that okay I made a seeming mistake but mistakes aren't necessarily mistakes they're just surprises and they're there for learning and I will learn and I will grow from this and I will attempt not to um, you know attempt to I suppose be more wise in my service and 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 how I yeah how I give and, and how I serve so let's talk about rejection because you know being vulnerable wouldn't really matter. You're not being vulnerable if you don't have the possibility of being rejected, I suppose. And, and you know, when you do go out and, and you are rejected in your service, they, they mention here in the quote that I just read to you, there's that possibility of recoiling back into yourself. Well, what does that mean? Um, I like to talk about chakras, and I know a lot of people don't fully understand it all, so it's okay if you don't. But I just want to mention briefly that, you know, coming up through... You have your seven chakras, Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. The uh, middle chakra is your heart one. So you're going to move up from red, orange, yellow into the heart, into the green, into that green flower, okay? And as you, you know, have, as a beginner seeker or whatever, you've attempted to open your heart in this cold, dark world that we live in, there's a good chance that somebody stomped on your flower or spit on it or just did something very bad to your, your poor flower. And so this, you know, what you've done now is you've got, you closed up that flower, kind of gone into retreat and gone back into the preceding chakras of uh, maybe just sort of community or personal. Most likely you've actually reverted back into your orange ray, which is into just like this anxious, personal... Um, you know, not feeling very good about your self-worth. Uh, and, and, and so, you know, as you're rejected, you hang out in those areas. And as you hang out in, in places of anxiousness and self-worth, right, like that's where you get that, those terrible feelings in your life um, of lack and just not feeling connected and, and things of that nature. So it's really easy to go into those areas and there's sort of like a negative feedback loop where the more you hang out there the worse you're going to feel and the worse those the more distorted you're going to get in those in those areas right um so attempt to when you are rejected and you recoil back in there that's okay you've done that purposely um this is like a safety mechanism of yourself so you don't sort of 
be too vulnerable and become too harmed, irreparably harmed, right? Um, so it's okay. Take your time to recoil and, and refresh yourself and, and hang out in, in them safe chakras of the mind and yourself and, you know, not necessarily putting yourself out there. And once you're ready, then step back forward into the heart and, you know, attempt to serve. And maybe this time when you attempt to serve, you're, you will be a little bit more freely giving, meaning um, you're not necessarily expecting anything in return. And therefore, if there's not really anything that can be rejected, right? Somebody who freely gives their service, if it's rejected, it really doesn't matter, provided that you truly, truly were freely giving. Um, let's use a quick example. I, I don't know. I like to use, you know, like say, uh, um, I don't want to, I don't want to say a bad word about how to, how to describe them. You know, a homeless person on the streets, uh, love, love, I love everybody. Okay. So we have a homeless, uh, person on the streets. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I just calling them a homeless person makes it sounds like I'm, I'm making separation. They're a person, right? But they don't have a home. <laughs> okay. But anyways, you, you give them money. Okay. You give them five bucks, you give them 10 bucks or whatever, as you go by, I, I would assume that you are giving in your intent to serve. Um, you're intending to serve them, you know, money's energy, you're hooking them up with a little something. Does it matter what they spend it on? It's a lot of people will say, well, I withhold because they'll, they'll buy drugs with it or something, right? Um, I try not to think that way. I mean, I think that, you know, I'm going to give to this person and I'm going to give not like I'm going to give them like $500 so that they maybe do something unwise and and get too much too much of their fun stuff and hurt themselves or something, right? But giving them a seemingly wise small amount, five, ten bucks or something, they can go out and and they may buy food and they may buy the other stuff that I'm not particularly wanting them to use that money for. But it doesn't really matter because maybe they buy their drugs with it this time, but you know, maybe the two bucks somebody gives them later, they go and buy food with it. And they wouldn't have they would have saved that two bucks for drugs if you hadn't have given them 10 earlier. So I, I don't know. It's, maybe that's a bit of a weird example. Um, I'll give you a better example, actually. Here's a better example about just being... Let's. I want to give you examples about being vulnerable and, and the possibility of rejection. Just personal examples from my life. So um, I have, in my past, uh, felt sort of the need to serve in a... I don't know, like just like a special way, I guess. Like you can serve any time in your life. You don't need to do something special as I'm about to explain. But this is what I felt the need to do for some reason. Um, I had, uh, you know, asked people to donate some money. So I, and then in my, when I get some money, sometimes I will, you know, go try to do things with it. So I wanted to um, just create like, I have like a bunch of spare toques that I always had around and you know I went out to the store and I bought a bunch of I try to make like little kits for sort of homeless folks out there you know um, so like deodorant q-tips uh, lip chap um, like a face cloth some socks um, toothpaste toothbrush little warmer pads um, what else did I get in there you know well there you go. you get the idea of what I did right so um, what I would do is I have these little toques filled with all this stuff and then I just had like maybe like 12 toques in a backpack and and I would you know drive around or be walking around and and if I s sort of saw anybody that seemed to look like they may need help um, I then offered them what I was there to offer right but <laughs> I want you to put yourself in my shoes as I'm walking downtown or driving downtown and like I'm in a car and then like, like stop the car and get out and be like, hey, you know, you look like you're having trouble in life, or like, you look like life sucks, like, do you need my help, right, like, I don't know, it just feels weird, I, my intention in going out is to serve, it's not like I'm going out and trying to um, necessarily make myself feel good, that's a bonus of it, but I'm, I'm really trying to help people in a manner which I feel is helpful, and so, um, you know, when I do, it, you know, imagine getting out of the car, going out there and being like, hey, you know, I have this stuff. Do you need any of it? It's really weird conversation to have because you have to come at it at, from a place of like, 
not being higher than them, right? You sort of have to humble yourself and be like, hey, you know, I don't know, I was just driving by, I saw you. I don't mean any offense or anything, but I have a couple of things in the back of my car. If you would like anything, you know, um, you know, I'd have this to freely offer to you. And some people were very nice and they take it and uh, some people were indifferent. They'd just be like, sure, whatever, give me it, right? <laughs> some people <clears throat> some people were very grateful, oh, like, oh, thank you so much. Um, and some people just straight up rejected me. They just didn't even actually, a couple of them, like, I think, like, didn't even acknowledge my existence. And I was like, okay, I'll just go ahead and leave. Um, you know, and another guy... I don't know if maybe he just had a little bit of mental issues or something, but he like almost yelled at me. Um, so, you know, there's this, this going out to serve and you may go out to serve, but not, you know, everybody doesn't want the same service. Like there's free will and not everyone is ready to be served and not everybody wants to be served. And, you know, who are you to serve <laughs> some, who are you to decide that someone needs service as well? There's all these fine, fine details in there. But what you'll find is that, um, you know, like what happened with me is I was walking down the street and, and I had given something out to some guy and then sort of like half hour later I happened to be sort of walking back past that area and he he like kind of jumped out to me and he mentioned like hey man you know like just this thought of this you know whatever you gave me was very nice but even just the thought that like somebody like you is out there I don't know just trying to do this and you know like it's just like a a loving interaction and he I, I suppose he probably felt the freely givingness of it and just the you know, the, I don't know, just the positivity of it, but, you know, he, that was, like, that stuck with me, and I don't know, that was a few years ago, even, and just that one interaction has stuck with me so hard, it, he was just, like, it, like, he told me, you know, you've given me some purpose, it's, like, it's, it wasn't even what I gave him, it was just the act of doing it, and, and that was enough to, sort of, like, seem to lift him up, which was great, you know, and bonus, that's sort of what I set out to do, but I don't, I can't be perfect and, and my service can't be controlled to the point that every time I serve, it is a perfect service. There is the possibility of things not going the way that maybe you saw. And maybe even when you're attempting to give and you're expecting certain outcomes, well, you're trying to force something anyways which is never you know it kind of robs things of the magic it robs the the mo the magic of the moment i would think for sure so now uh let's go even another layer deeper right so when you are attempting to serve there's this thing that we do which is in relation to rejection where we put masks on so the, i i always felt this was really you know, um, let's say, um, Ra mentions somewhere in the material, you know, the best way to serve others is to basically be your most authentic self. And in your radiation of being, you know, you're radiating the essence of the creator and life and love and service. And that is your basic service to a anything in this planet. You know, so with that in mind, I would like to point out how we often will wear a fake mask, you know, a mask of personality, not who we truly authentically are when we're interacting with each other, because it's easier for somebody to reject the fake you <laughs> than it is to reject the real you. You know, as you lay yourself out there, the full, vulnerable, raw, real you, um, you know, you have the ability to have people to reject you, but they're not just rejecting this fake mask you, right? They're rejecting like the core of your essence, the core of your being. And I would think that probably hurts a little more than somebody's just rejecting the surface you. Um, so I think there's a bit of an art even in service where you really have to try to just be honest and authentic and authentically you. And that's not easy. And I don't really have any suggestion of how to do that except to just know yourself and understand yourself better and the more you do that the more that uh you'll be able to figure out who the authentic you is like who who are you really what do you really want what do you desire what do you believe all these sorts of questions will get you closer um to the authentic you and the more that you are authentically you and vulnerably you i would suggest 
you know, when you do finally make those deeper connections and service and communication with others, that they're going to be deeper, they're going to be more authentic, they're going to be more honest. And oh, here's something that's coming up to my brain right now. The more vulnerable you are, the, mo the more vulnerable you allow others to be. I think actually that's a massive one. Like when I, you know, I, in my job, uh, I work for a corporation, but I still do coaching within my job. Um, and much of the uh, coaching is basically to forge a connection with people in order to to go through like a growth process with them. And I can't forge a connection or even, you know, serve them if I'm not able to authentically connect with them. And, and so how do I do that? I will vulnerably, you know, tell them something about myself. I will, I will open myself up and just be honest, not like some superior who is above them, who is expecting a certain thing. I will be very human and I will just say some things maybe they weren't expecting, right? I'll open myself up so that it allows others to open themselves up. And then we can find out closer together, you know, what it is that, you know, we need to, to, to be able to move forward or what it is that I can do to serve them better, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, as you're able to be more vulnerable, you, that is a massive key to allowing other people to open up. And I guess that sort of means that, you know, you have to do the work that you're expecting others to do. How are you going to attempt to serve somebody if you can't be vulnerable enough to open yourself up to who you truly are? Um, and, and that's not easy work. That's the whole work of this seeking thing is, what, is, what does Ross say? Uh, one, know the self. Two, understand the self. Three, become the creator. So this is all the same thing, um, but how are you going to know yourself and understand yourself? That takes quite a while. That, that takes a while, um, and it takes the vulnerability of knowing that you're wrong about a lot of things, and you make errors all the time, and you know, you're, could be better than you could be, uh, sort of things along, <laughs> along those lines that people don't really want to hear. It's like if you're trying to go out and serve other people or, you know, maybe even you want other people to be the best versions of themselves, that might be a better way of saying it. Well, you kind of have to be the best version of yourself. You have to be able to, um, to, to know who you are so you can authentically open yourself to others and, and they can then, you know, find out who they are, connect, et cetera, et cetera. We can all help each other in, in this regard by being who we truly are. And that requires us to be vulnerable. You know, even with starting my podcast, right, I very much had this feeling that, oh, no, you know, these people are going to judge me and, and like, what are they going to think about what if I don't articulate properly? Uh, what if I st stutter too much? <laughs> you know, there's like all these silly things that my brain gives me about my insecurities and, and things of this nature. But I know, well, I, I didn't know, I guess I do know, but I know now and I assumed this, that, you know, if I put myself out there and I'm vulnerable and I just explain my path and my thinking process, I find that, you know, a lot of people, at least in like comment sections on Instagram, when I leave my little, my little write-ups about, you know, my interpretations of the quotes, that a lot of people say that that's really helpful. So, well, if it's helpful, it's helpful. And that requires me to sort of expose more of myself and be a bit more vulnerable and letting you guys know about who I am a bit more and, and going down that path and being possibly misunderstood and maybe possibly making some people angry. But that's okay, right? We're going to forge a connection with those who are willing or, you know, that I'm able to serve and to serve one is to serve all. And, and I'm grateful for the ability to do that. So thank you guys. I think that's pretty good in terms of vulnerability, rejection, authenticity. Um, if you appreciate my service, you can support me at theoneinfinitecreator.com. You can just scroll down. There's a support section. There's a few ways to, to help support this channel and my efforts here. And yeah, of course, the links to this material can also be found at the same website, theoneinfinitecreator.com. And I have direct links to LL Research, where you can find the quo and the raw material and, and read it all for free and download it as you will. 
And yeah, so if you can give me a like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment. I like to sort of hear what you guys think about this. And also, um, you know, if you have anything for future topics, just mention it and I'll write it down. And there's a possibility that in the coming month or so, you may see the podcast come out with that topic. So thank you guys. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week, or I guess is the end of the week. And um, yeah, I will talk to you again early next week. Take care. Love you guys.